happens. So first thing I want to talk about is what it means to be parallel. Okay, so eyeballs up here. Eyeballs, 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 eyeballs. Okay, who's heard the word parallel before? Who knows what it means? Okay. The two lines are next to each other, but they never intersect. Bingo. Okay. There are two lines that are next to each other, and they'll never intersect. Why did they never intersect? Someone. Gabriel? Because they don't, like, turn, they go straight. Yeah. Meaning? They'll never end. They'll never end. And they never intersect because they're facing the same direction. Do you guys agree? Yeah. What we're learning today is that parallel lines will have the same slope. Okay, so anytime two lines are parallel, they have to have the same slope. So in that definition, do you guys see that? Two lines in the same plane that never intersect are parallel lines. Two distinct non-line, non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Highlight that, okay? So as soon as you change the slope of one of your lines, so if one line's like this and the other line's like this, are these parallel? No. no. Why not? Matthew? Because they'll eventually touch. They'll eventually touch. Do you guys agree they're going to touch up here? Yeah. It may not, you may not see that they're touching right now, but they will eventually touch. Do you guys agree? But as soon as I make the slopes the same, are these ever going to touch? No, because no, they're facing the same direction. Does that make a little bit more sense? So if the slopes are the same, they're never going to touch their parallel. Got it? Now, Vertical lines are also parallel. Do you guys agree with that? So this vertical line and this vertical line are parallel, correct? But they don't fall under this same category. Why? They have to state that vertical lines are a separate category. Why? AJ? They don't have slope. What do you mean they don't have slope? slope Excellent. Their slopes are undefined. Write that down, okay? So the vertical lines are a special case because... I'm writing in a highlighter because the slope is undefined. Okay. And it's not really that convenient to say if the slope's undefined, that's equal to something else that's undefined. Okay. So all you guys need to know is that vertical lines will be parallel. Okay? If there's two vertical lines on a page, they're going to be parallel. But it's not because their slopes are the same. Okay? Second thing, if I have two horizontal lines on a page, would those be parallel? Yes. Because their slopes are what? They're both zero. Do you guys see the difference? Vertical, we can't set something that's undefined equal to something that's undefined. But horizontal, we can because zero is equal to zero. Okay? All right. Let's first start by identifying which lines are parallel. So take a look at that diagram down below. We're going to determine which of those lines are parallel. And I laid out the two steps. Step number one, we have to figure out what the slope is of each of those lines. So let's start there, okay? Start with line A, and we're going to find the slope of line A. Now, some of you I already know would find the slope by using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Do you guys agree? And you can absolutely do that. But when we're given the graph, there's a slightly simpler method. Does anyone remember it? Yeah, Nick? Rise over run. Okay, so let's write that down. M equals the rise over the run. Okay? Now, for the blue line, what do we need to do to figure out the rise over the run? Christian? Okay. Down by one. Perfect. And then to the right by five. Perfect. Okay. So we go down by one and then to the right by five. What should those values be? Going down one, what should we write next to that arrow? Negative. Minus one or negative one. And next to the one that moves to the right? Plus five. So my rise component's minus one, my run component's plus five. What's my slope? Negative one over five. Negative one over five. Does that simplify? It does? To what? It doesn't. Okay, so you're just going to box it in there. If I simplify, is, are there like, can we reduce this 1 over 5 to something else? I thought you said it is simplified already. Oh, it's already simplified. McCarvin? Yes, quickly. Okay. Now, B, let's do it. That's right. M equals rise over run. What would B's slope be? 
What would the slope of line B be? Alec? Uh, Excellent. We're going down one, but only to the right four now. So it's plus four, it's minus one, negative one over four. Circle it. You guys with me so far? Okay, yeah. what about the green one? What would be the slope of the green line? Mr. Fuxa? Negative one over five. Negative one over five. You went down one and then to the right five? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now let's ask ourselves, which of these lines, if we know that parallel means the slopes are the same, which of these lines must be parallel then? The blue and the green one, okay? Line A and line C, do you guys agree? So how we write it though, is you have to use proper notation. You have to write A, this symbol, and C. And what this symbol means is all it means is that the two lines to the left and to the right of that symbol are parallel. So in other words, A is parallel to C, okay? So I want you guys to write that down so you have it in your notes. This means A is parallel to C. How I remember it is if you look at parallel, right? Do you see the double L's there in parallel? It's that same symbol in AC. A parallel to C. Now, you could have also reversed the order and wrote that C is parallel to A. Okay? Either way is fine. Is B parallel to either of them? Why not? Christian? It's not the same slope. Okay? Did someone have a question? I saw a hand. Yeah, Mia. So, could B just mean everything? B, I mean, it's still a line, right? But it's not parallel, so we're not going to write it down anywhere. Okay? Because all I wanted to know is which of these lines are parallel to each other. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, let's do one where we don't have the graph. Okay? So we're going to write line A that passes through negative 5, comma 3. And negative 6, comma, negative 1. And we're going to draw a line through that, those two points. And then we're going to also draw a line, which is line B. That goes through 3, negative 2, and 2, negative 7. You're going to have to continue this guy down below. Oh, I went over too many. Okay. Are these lines parallel? Now, I know a lot of you guys just want to be like, well, it looks like they are. They look like they're heading in the same direction. But you can't be certain. The only way to tell for sure if lines are parallel is to compare what? Slope. The slope. So you have to find the slope of these, okay? So what's the slope of the red line? Let's focus on the red line. Austin? Four. Four over? Yeah, it's positive 4 over positive 1. So the slope of this, our m, is 4. Or 4 over 1. You guys with me? Yeah? Okay. What about the blue line? What's the slope of the blue line? Someone different. Slope of the blue line. Yeah, very good. We go up five and then to the right one. So positive five over positive one, the slope is five. Okay, someone tell me, are these lines parallel? No. no. no why not? Slopes Their slopes are different. Okay, so we write A is not parallel to what? B. That's all it wanted to know, right? Whether they were parallel or not. So Caitlin asked, why don't we write the symbol? We don't write the symbol because they're not parallel, okay? We only use that parallel symbol if they were parallel. Mia? Will lines always be called A and B? No. <laughs> they could be called whatever uh, 
a question calls them, okay? But it will be a letter, okay? So like X, they could be line X, line Z, line C, line F, okay? Just got to look at the instructions, all right? Questions. These are good ones. Moving on. Okay, now we are going to write an equation of a line that passes through 5, negative 4 and is parallel to the line that's given, okay? Now, to understand what this problem is asking us to do is I need us to draw a picture. So over here on the right, I want you guys to draw a little picture for yourself, okay? I want you to draw a line in red. And I want you to draw a dot that's off of the line, okay? Oh. What? What this question is asking us to do, it says, okay, Use this black dot and be like, okay, draw a line that's parallel to the red one through the black dot. Go. Do it. Draw a line that's parallel to the red one that goes through the black dot. Draw a line that's parallel to the red one that goes through the black dot. And then look back up at the screen. Does your line look similar to mine? <laughs> if it doesn't, okay, ask yourself, what needs to be true about these two lines? Same direction. And we know if they're parallel, what needs to be true about their slopes? So write that down. Same slope. So we all came up with the same blue line because we knew it had to be parallel to the red one. Do you guys agree? So what we're going to use from the red line is all we're going to use is its slope, and we're going to use that point, that black point, and we're going to come up with our own equation, okay? So the three things that it gave us, it gave us a point, it told us it needed to be parallel, and it gave us this equation. So we know that they need to be parallel, Let's write the parallel symbol down there. And let's first, let's gather what our slope needs to be, okay? So the slope of our original equation, the one that was given, is what? So m is equal to 2, okay? Because it's already in y equals mx plus b. Do you guys agree? Hold on, I'll give me one second, okay? Now, the slope of our line... needs to be what? Why? Because they have to be the same. Because the lines are parallel. parallel. Okay? So we know that the slope is 2. And we also have this point. Do you guys agree? What form can you use that has a point and slope and you can write an equation with it? Point slope form. Okay, so let's go ahead and write point slope form. It was y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Do you guys agree? You guys with me or not? Nah? Yes. Mia. I don't understand why, why like, you wouldn't use slope-intercept form. Okay, that's a very good question. Why can't I use slope-intercept form with this point? Christian? It's not a y-intercept. Okay. Mia, this has to be a y-intercept to use that easy y equals mx plus b form, okay? All right, so now we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. What do we do from here? Sophia? Very good. What points do I plug in? Good. This is my x1 and this is my y1. Plug them in. So I'm going to get y minus what? Negative 4 equals 2, two times x minus, five. x minus 5. Now, I want us writing this in slope-intercept form, so let's go ahead and change it. How do we go about changing this to slope-intercept form? Caitlin. Um, first, you do y plus 4 is negative plus minus Good. Equals 2x uh, minus 10. Minus 10. What'd you do with the two? You're, at, you're right, but what'd you do with it? What'd you do with the two? You distributed it. Very good. Last step, Caitlin. You subtract four. Mm-hmm. 
So y equals? 2x minus 14. Minus 14. This is our final answer. Okay, really quickly, guys, questions about that process. Be honest. Did any part give you a little bit of trouble understanding? I need to hear from you guys. We were good with this? Okay. Two. We Gucci? Okay, I want you guys to try B on your own. Good luck. Okay, but hold on. Before you did that, you needed to get something from the original line. Good. What is the slope here? Perfect. So, in point slope form, the equation is y minus 2 equals 1 over 4, parentheses, x plus 4. Okay, very good. Why is it plus 4, though, McCarvin? Good. This is x1. This is y1. Okay, keep going. Why? Um, because when I, if you distribute, you're going to get 1 over 4x, and when you distribute 1 over 4, the 4 is 1. Why does that make 1? Because uh, I, the way I did it, um, you have to, like, I got 1 fourth of 4. Okay. And that's 1 fourth of 4 is 1. Very good. Mm -hmm. And I got y equals 1 over 4x plus 3. Plus 3. Okay. Someone compare the first equation and the second equation. What do you notice is the same about those two equations? The slope. That means they must be what kind of lines? Parallel. Parallel. Perfect. What's different about those two equations? The y intercept. The y now, if they're parallel, do you agree that they should have y different y-intercepts? Because they're not the same line. Do you guys agree with that? Okay. Next, what we're going to talk about is perpendicular. Okay? So, underline the word perpendicular because this is where our, the topic of our lesson changes. Okay? So, parallel was the same slope. They're never going to intersect. Do you guys agree? Perpendicular is a bit different. Who's heard the word perpendicular before? Okay, does anyone know what it means? Karen? They're like two lines that like intersect. Mm-hmm. And like that, they don't have like the same reciprocal. Mm, they do intersect. I'll give you that. Addison? It makes a right angle. Beautiful. Okay, write this down. These two lines that intersect, do they create a right angle? And those of you that don't know what a right angle is, it's considered like a perfect corner. It is exactly 90 degrees, okay? These are not perpendicular. Then I want you to draw another two lines that intersect exactly at 90 degrees, making some, some would call it a perfect cross and they form a 90 degree angle. This symbol indicates perpendicular. Okay, they intersect at a 90 degree angle. Do you guys notice anything that's a perpendicular angle in this classroom? Mia's pointing at the ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling tiles. They're all perfect right angles. They're perpendicular. What else is perpendicular? Yeah? Yeah, the edges in the floor. What else? The board. What part of the board? Uh, the screen part. Yeah, the screen part. You guys see how this is a perfect edge? It's a perfect corner. What else? Caitlin? Yeah, the, all the signs that are squares or rectangles, okay, they're all perpendicular. Yeah. The cross, yeah. Do you guys see the cross up on top? That's also perpendicular lines, okay? They must form a 90 degree angle, okay? Now, 
The slopes of those perpendicular lines is something called a negative reciprocal or an opposite reciprocal. Please underline both of them, okay? A negative reciprocal or an opposite reciprocal. They mean the same thing, okay? Now, how we find those, you guys have heard reciprocal before, right? What's a reciprocal? What does that mean? Yeah, like you flip the fraction, right? So if your number was 1 over 4, what's the reciprocal of 1 over 4? Four? 4. 4. Now, opposite reciprocal just means flip it and change the sign. Flip it and change the sign. So if it was positive, it's going to become? Negative. If it was negative, it's going to become? Positive. So let's try a few opposite reciprocals here. If we have 1 fourth, what would be the opposite reciprocal of 1 fourth? Beautiful. Negative 4 over 1, technically, which is just negative 4. Do you guys agree? Yeah. If you want to write it negative 4 over 1, that's fine. Okay? Negative 3 over 2, the opposite reciprocal. 2 over 3. Positive. Yes? Okay. If it was negative 3, what's the opposite reciprocal? 1 over 3. Okay? Because what's negative 3 technically over? One, do you guys agree? Flip it, make it one third, and change the sign. What about one? Negative one. And what about negative four? One over four. Okay? We Gucci here. Any questions on these opposite reciprocals? This is very important. Yeah, Austin. Wouldn't that be negative two over three? Not two over three? No. You do change the sign. Wasn't it negative to begin with? Yeah, but only for one number. Oh, you want to make it negative 2 over 3? Yeah, that? No. Because remember, if you're changing the sign of a number, right? If it's a fraction, you have to change the sign of the whole thing. Okay? That's a good question. Did you guys hear Austin's question? Yes. So, he asked, well, wouldn't you change this 3 to positive and make this 2 negative then? But remember, you just change the sign of the whole thing. So if the whole thing was negative, you have to change the sign and make it positive. Okay? All right. Um, if two slopes create perpendicular lines, they're related by this relationship. They're going to be opposite reciprocals. Okay? Now, if they're parallel, what was true about their slopes? They're the same. They're the same. But if they're perpendicular, now we know the relationship. It's opposite reciprocals. Gucci? Okay, let's check. So, we're going to identify parallel and perpendicular lines in these two examples. Um, determine which of the lines, if any, are parallel or perpendicular. In order to do that, our first step is we need to find the slope, okay? So let's start by finding the slope of lines A, B, and C. And let's start with line A. Line A is pretty easy, okay? In this equation, what is the slope and how do you know? Karen, it's four. Our slope is m equals 4, 4 over 1. How did you know it was 4? Because the x value is also the slope. It's the m, the m value. Good. And this is in what form, guys? Y equals mx plus b. What's the official name of the form? Slope, slope intercept. Very good. Okay. Line b. Be careful here. This is a tricky one. You do not know the slope right off the bat. Why? Why? Matthew? It's not in slope intercept form. It is not in slope intercept form. You are a thousand percent correct. Could we change it into slope intercept form? Yeah. Then we have to do that. What should we do to change it into slope intercept form? Caitlin? Good. Subtract x from both sides. If I subtract x from both sides, what do I now have as my equation? 3 minus x. I'm not going to write it like that, though. Because I want it in mx plus b. Gabriel? Um, negative x plus 3. Good. Negative x plus 3. Guys, we should be getting into the habit of writing it like this so it's easier for us down the road. Okay? Are we Gucci on this step? Any questions? Ask me now. Mia? How would you do line C? Hold on. We're going to get there. Because this is not done. Karen? Remember, it's y equals mx plus b. Do you agree? Yeah. 
I want that x term to come first so I can determine what my m is. You, if you write 3 minus x, it's not wrong, okay? But I would get in the habit of writing it like this, okay? Good questions. Any other questions? Okay, what do I still have to do? What do I still have to do? Yeah. Kyra? Distribute. No. Oh. Don't distribute. Divide by four. Ah, I get what you mean now. Yeah, now we're distributing the one fourth. Yes, you're absolutely right. Guys, I'm going to be honest. Make, put a star next to this. This is where we make a lot of mistakes here. Okay, we need to be proficient at this. When we're dividing by a number, that doesn't go into both the terms. Okay, so we're going to get y over here by itself. Who wants to take a shot at determining what this is going to be? Gabriel? I will give you this, Gabriel. It is 3 over 4 at the end. It is 3 over 4 over here. Christian? It will be negative 1 fourth x plus 3 4 4. Good. Okay. Yeah, Alec? Yeah. Slope is 4? No. How did I get negative 1 over 4x? So let me add a little step here, okay? So do you guys agree that this is y equals negative x over 4 plus 3 over 4? My denominator can be put underneath both of the numerators. Do you agree? I can do that. That's the same as distributing. Now, negative, what's in, technically in front of this x? A 1, right? So you can rewrite this as y equals negative 1 over 4 times x. Right? If you're adding or subtracting. Okay? If you're adding or subtracting, you are not supposed to combine like terms. Okay? But when you're multiplying or dividing, we're still, this is still a term and this is still a term. Okay? Now, we don't add them together because one has an x and one does not have an x. Okay? But they're both being affected by that division symbol. Does that make a little bit more sense, guys? Okay, so now we have this as our equation. Is this in slope intercept form? Yes. What's our slope? Negative one over four. Yes? You sure? Okay. What about line C? What about line C? AJ? Good. Add 2x to the other side. What's my new equation, Austin? Good. What would I do after that? Alec? Divide by negative 8. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So now, Alec, what's my new equation? Y equals... Mm -hmm. X... One divided by negative four, X minus two. Okay, you're absolutely right. Let me write it out though, so you guys can see the steps. This is technically 2x over negative 8 plus, or no, minus 16 over 8. Alec noticed that 2 and 8 have a common factor of 2, so we divided both of them to get negative 1 fourth x, and then 16 is divisible by 8. It goes in two times, okay? What's our slope here? AJ? 1 over negative 4, negative 4, 1 over 4. Perfect. Yep. So remember, guys, negative 1 over 4 is the same as 1 over negative 4, which is the same as negative 1 over 4. Okay? All of these are the same. Okay? Now, which of the lines are parallel? Which of the lines are parallel? Kyra? Very good. So we're going to write B is parallel to C. Why are those two parallel, Kyra? Because they both have the same slope. Perfect. Their slopes are the same. 
Which lines are perpendicular? McCarvin? Good. A is perpendicular to B, and A is perpendicular to C. These are the straight, the three statements that I want. Who can tell me why A is perpendicular to B? Alec? How do you know? A does not have the same slope as the others. Good. Now, it's not just because they intersect. How do you know that they form a 90 degree angle? Uh, I think do. Mia? Yeah, opposite Good. If you take four and you flip it and make it negative, isn't it negative one fourth? Yes? Christian? Um, the symbol that you put, like, put there is perpendicular. That's the, is that something you want us to put like a like quadratic or something? Yep. So you guys make a note to yourself this means parallel. And this means perpendicular. Okay? I would like you guys to also try letter B on your own. Independently, without your neighbors. Go. Okay. How did you do that? You subtracted 2x from both sides. Okay, what'd you get? I got 6y equals negative 2x minus 3. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And after that, you want to divide the 6 from the... Mm-hmm. Which is by equals negative 1 third x. Negative 1 third... Negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. Minus 1 half? Yeah, that's right. Beautiful. My slope is then... Negative 1 over 3. Questions? How many of us got this one before I went over it? Okay. Okay. What about B? What about line B? Emma? Why? Excellent. Did you guys hear what Emma said? It's already in y equals mx plus b. So the m is just this 3. Do you guys see that? So this was the easiest one of the 3. And then c. Caitlin? Mm, good, so by 18. Okay. There's no x. So my slope must be zero, okay? If you finished solving this problem, you would get y equals, I believe, a three over two. What kind of a line is y equals three over two? Horizontal. horizontal. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Okay? So, now, what was the question asking us? Which ones are parallel and which ones are perpendicular? Are any of the lines parallel? Why not? None of the slopes are the same. Do you guys see that? Are any of the lines perpendicular, though? A and B are perpendicular because they are? Mia? Wait. Um, they're opposite reciprocals. Very good. It's like to say it, like A is perpendicular to B, does it have to be like an alphabetical order? No. You could write B is perpendicular to A. Yep. AJ. Uh, on line C, if you see it, there's no X, do you have to... No. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys hear AJ's question? If you see that there's no x, don't you know that the slope is zero from the beginning? Absolutely. So as soon as you see x not there in your equation, you know it's horizontal. You have to write m equals zero. Now, if there's no y and there's only x, what kind of line is it? Undefined. Vertical. The slope is going to be undefined. Would you say that? What? Would you say undefined? You could just say, yeah, uh, the vertical line slope is undefined. Gucci? Yeah. Questions? Okay. One last example, people. I know. It's been a while. Okay? Let's go. Well, one last one. So we're going to write an equation of line that passes through negative 3, 1. It's perpendicular to the line 1 half x 
plus three. Y equals one half X plus three, okay? So first we start with the slope of the line that's given. What is the slope of the line that's given? So this M equals one half, but now we are determining a perpendicular line. Do you guys agree? So the slope of our line is not gonna have the same slope. It's gonna have what kind of slope? The opposite reciprocal, so negative two. So M is negative two, and I use the point. Do you guys agree? Yeah. This is my X one, this is my Y one. Can I use slope intercept form here? No, no. why not? Because it has to be, zero it has to be a Y intercept if we're gonna use slope intercept. So what form do I use? Point slope. So y minus 1 equals negative 2 times x plus 3. Distribute the negative 2. You get y minus 1 equals negative 2x minus 6. And then add 1 to both sides. You're going to get y equals negative 2x minus 5. This is your answer. Alec. Where did you get the 2 from? I, I, I was caught guard. So remember, it's perpendicular, right? So you have to flip and change the sign to make it the opposite reciprocal. All right, guys, this is it for today. Turn these in.